yeah. <laughs> sure, take your turn. Yeah. Okay, so then I get the speed down to zero. And I'm docked too. Or, uh, well, um, it depends. Uh, does uh, the throttle reset for the uh, for the next mission? It sure does, yes. Okay, so otherwise I would have even gone this way. Ah, to get a head start. <laughs> it's an interesting yes. idea. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, then, then I'm done. Great. Well, nice, done. nice job. That was, that was very, very close. Joe, I was impressed with your flying and, and you as well, Chris. Um, and the way you slid That's in there with that, that was, that was, that was crazy. I never seen you do that, Joe. That it's the first time I've ever done it actually. <laughs> but Chris, um, I'm going to give you the option since, since yeah. you dock cleanly at zero velocity, perfectly, you were touching the base station. Why don't you take the option this time? So what happens now is you, you've met at this space station um, and the factions are attempting to come to um, a deal and things fall through. And one faction um, decides to uh, break away and take advantage of, this, of the chaos in, in the meeting and steals a uh, very important and dangerous artifact that could be that could threaten um, the stability that, uh, in, the, in the area. So that one ship that has the artifact needs to escape to the... And I'll put it in the right spot this time, Joe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I put it in the wrong spot last time. Um, that needs to go here. So you're, the person that has that artifact has to escape to the jump point at A. Um, and that means mm -hmm. at any velocity, their ship has to overlap that token. That's considered winning the mission for the person who's stealing the artifact. Um, okay. the, um, pursuers, which will now be, it came from the swamp. Hi. Um, and what's your Hi. name? Uh, Glenn. Glenn, nice to meet you. So Glenn will be joining as well. Hi. Um, so it's, but since you, uh, docked at zero, that was incredible. Um, Chris, would you like to be the pursuers and, um, which attempt, you attempt to stop the ship by destroying it? Or would you like to be the one running away with the artifact and escaping to the jump point so they uh try to ram uh, the ship or how it is stopped the per the pursuers how can they stop uh the here's where we get into my <laughs> attached yeah, to the uh, ship and they'll yeah, have uh, weapons. I'll, I'll go over that got it um so yeah. yeah so the way um they will attempt to stop you is with um, offensive weaponry um, that each of the ships can load. And you'll be mm -hmm. able to load your ship with that as well. Um, so you will not be defenseless in this escape attempt, um, but they will have means to stop you from escaping um, the sector. Okay, so um, where does uh, Swamp's ship spawn? <laughs> What's that? It's a, where does Swamp's ship spawn? It's a tactical decision. <laughs> yes, it does. So. <laughs> The way it'll work is if, if whoever the escapee will be on one end of the station here and whoever the attackers are will be on the other end. Um, so, uh, Glenn, why don't you pick a seat and tell us which, uh, whether you thought you're going to pick the um, Proximite faction, which is blue, or the Wolf faction, which is orange. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll take blue, but how do I actually... How do I take take a seat? Yeah. This first time I'm using tabletop simulator, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. So what you do is click on your your name in the top right and select change color. And you pick Got it. proximate. Excellent. So we're gonna move your ship over here, and let's just pretend this is the setup. And these two ships are, are attempting to stop the green ship. So that's the setup um, in the beginning okay. of the mission. Okay. If, if if you were to choose to escape, you can join the yeah. attackers, and somebody else could be the escapee. Uh, I don't it, I don't know if it's really difficult to start as an as the escapee, so I'll just I'll just pursue. Okay. Okay, I'll take the artifact and get away <laughs> with it. Okay, excellent. <laughs> All right, so 
this is exactly how the mission will start. And if it was four players, you would have a uh, another ship here protecting you. Uh, in this case, we have three players. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and as the first player um, and the person escaping with the artifact, you get to go first. So that's your advantage. And the other mm -hmm. advantage that you have, well, not really an advantage, um, it could work for everyone's favor, is that you're not allowed to engage within uh, six hexes of the space station. That means no one can attack or launch offensive weaponry within six hexes of the station because your faction bosses want this to be quiet. They don't want to make a scene. Um, so you're trying to be as discreet as possible in chasing down this, this lost dangerous artifact. Um, but once you're outside the sixth hex, you can certainly engage. So what I'll mm -hmm. go over now is um, the modules that you can equip your ship with. This is to defend yourself or attack with. Um, if you look on your bottom left of your board, and I have that zoomed in on the um, uh, Terran Reach faction right now, yeah. there are yeah. six modules laid out. We have a particle torque, which is a small uh, weapon that can shoot anywhere um, around your ship within six hexes of the center of gravity of your ship, which is the black hex on your ship. It can target one um, and hit for two damage. Um, and it happens instantly. That just means that it's not doesn't take a round or two to, to take effect. It happens as soon as you um, spend the energy and spend the crew member on it. Um, you have the, uh, the big version of that uh, called the particle cannon. Um, this has two modes of fire. It has a direct line, and I'll go back to the board to demonstrate how that works. It has a direct line of fire that comes out of the front hex, with the hex that is in front of the ship, and the particle cannon is has an infinite range. So mm -hmm. if you use the beam mode of that weapon, it has an infinite range down the straight path that your ship is facing. It's a rather large weapon and it needs to be mounted on the front. So it shoots down that straight path. And if you use that in that mode, it does three damage. It is hard to hit with because it requires that your target is on that path. Um, but it does, it's pretty effective in, in doing damage. You can also use the sweep mode. And that is, rather than a straight line, it is an arc um, within six hexes. So any ship that is within this arc of the sweep takes the damage. And that could be your friendly mm -hmm. ship as well. Do I so have this, to hit the gravity center of the ship or any hex? Any hex. Okay. Um, so the weapon will tell you whether or not the range is from your center of gravity or the, the front front of your um, ship. But um, any um, effect on a ship is by any hex uh, on the base of the ship. Hmm. So there we have the arc of the sweep. And um, because it spreads the energy out across that arc, it only does two damage. Um, but it's, it's more versatile than the beam in certain situations. Then we have the uh, missile launcher. That deploys a missile. I'm going to grab this stack right here. From any hex that is adjacent to the center of gravity of your ship. So using this green ship as an example. Oops, that's not the right place to put it. Let me fix that. So any any adjacent hex to the center of gravity. So you can deploy them, um, and that's not a missile. I grabbed the wrong one. My apologies. There it is. You can deploy a missile, any hex adjacent to your center of gravity. So it could be here, here, over here, or over here. And that is considered a sector board uh, or deployable that activates at the end of the round. So you deploy the missile on your activation, and then you move the missile um, during the sector board's act activation. And the missile's capabilities, it can move up to six spaces per round and turn up to two for every hex of movement. So if it was to go forward one, it could turn one or two, and then move forward, turn again and move, turn again and move, turn again and move, and so on, up to six mm -hmm. hexes every round. And what you do with uh, anything that is guided, um, as indicated by the module, there's a stack of tokens that you take with it that represents a number of timers on that 
on that guided weapon. And at the end of the movement, you take one of the stack off. So that then reduces the amount of time that that has left on the board. Once you have completed its path and all tokens are gone, and it has not overlapped um, a hex of a ship or the target that you are shooting at, that gets taken off the board and it is no longer um, active anymore. So that's how you keep track of the life and uh, duration of guided weapons. Can the asteroid be shot? <laughs> and not these asteroids, um, mm -hmm. uh, but we can certainly mix it up. If you wanted to tear this up a level, we would be adding in um, animated or dynamic asteroids that have their own movement and can do mm -hmm. two damage to your ship if you overlap. Um, but for, for this round, since we have someone newly joining, I think we'll just, we'll keep those off the board. Um, then we have, and the, if the missile overlaps, um, and the indication there is the, when it says collision, that means the missile must overlap the ship that it's going to target in order to do damage. And if it does, it does three damage. Um, also the missile launcher comes with three missiles. So you'll see the ammo indicator and um, icon on the module that says it has three. So it comes with three missiles with that module. You can expand your capacity for any guided weapon or any um, munition by adding in what we call a um, hardened ammo hold. And the hardened ammo hold is, oh, here it is. Here it is, sorry, picked up the wrong one. Um, the hardened ammo hold lets you add an additional uh, three units of ammo to any munitions that takes ammo. Um, then we have the uh, damping field. That's a tactical uh, module that lets you reduce the velocity of a ship that you're that is in range, so kind of slowing them down. Um, and then we have a jammer. And what the jammer does is any guided weapon that is within six hexes um, of your center of gravity loses a timer so effectively you're jamming or you're messing with the um the functionality of that guided uh weapon and you're taking a timer off of it so it's reducing the chance of it um catching up to you and, and doing damage um and then there's a bunch of other modules up on the top left um that you're certainly welcome to pick um but what i do recommend uh based upon um being new is that uh, the mission is going to recommend modules that each player has and if you're good at flying and you like to go fast and you're the escapee, um, mine launchers have been very useful. And that lets you drop a static, kind of a static bomb on the board. And any ship that approaches the token within two, so if it is here, it detonates. And it does a significant amount of damage. I think it's, I forget actually, what is the damage on that? Damage is three. And it does that damage to every ship within range of two. So even if it, you have a friendly ship in that area, if that, if that mine detonates, every ship takes the damage. So, okay. um, what, and the way you mount the modules on the ship is you take them over to your ship dashboard. And if it basically, if it fits on the dashboard, you can mount it. This particular ship has uh, four units of module space. That means you can take two large like this, or mm -hmm. one large and two small, or four smalls. Um, you get to decide how you want to configure that. Okay. Um, and um, we, but we do recommend the uh, more straightforward modules for this if you have not played it before. So what would you recommend the pursuers to pick? I recommend the particle cannon, particle tort, and maybe even a second particle tort. And if you'd like to grab two of any other of the modules, you can go grab them from the extension on the left side of the, of the board. Wait, wait, you said particle cannon, particle turret, and what else? You could take a second particle toward if you'd like. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go grab one. On the left side, right? Uh, for you, it's on the left side, yes. I think Joe's taking missiles. 
Wow. What is this? Yeah, I took a, I took a particle that. cannon, particle turret, and a dampening field. Uh, maybe you should take missiles to show everyone how that works. Oh, you? Uh, I can do that if you would like. Sure. Uh, so, oh. Just out of curiosity, what is this stuff here? <laughs> Which stuff? Oh, uh, <laughs> that is uh, uh, that that art is not final. Um, it is uh, of components we're using for testing scenarios. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like uh, crystal asteroids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so I think everyone's picked out their modules. Very good. Yeah. Uh, so what you're going to do is now add status cubes. Um, so the status cubes go on your module in each open slot. And that okay. represents the relative health of your module. I should lock in the place there for you. Um, and yep. that's important because if you don't have a status cube on a module, it no longer works. Now, besides modules, you also have your crew. And each ship has, um, we've already pre-selected this crew, but normally you'd be either drafting them or they'd be pre-configured to you um, and recommended to you for the mission. Um, but yep. for this demo, we have the uh, crew, the specialist crew attached to each um, ship. And I have, I'm again zoomed in on the um, crew above the Bastial Battle Cruiser of the Turn and Reach faction. Um, so we have Systems 1, and that is a specialist crew that gives a passive effect called Guided Specialist. And that lets you add a, another timer to any munition that's on the board. So it's Guided Munitions may start with plus one timer when launched. So that's a passive effect. So every time you're launching a missile um, or, or a torpedo you would, or um, anything else that was guided, you would add an additional token to that stack, effectively let, letting that munition last an extra round. It has a pass uh, active effect called um, guidance hack, and that lets you um, remove one timer from a guided munition within six spaces. Would so that that's require... when I place a specialist on that. Uh, on that's that right. So when yeah. you use a specialist here instead of on your ship, you would then get that effect. So that that specialist mm -hmm. crew did their work and is messing with that incoming missile. Then you have support one, um, which has shield expert as a passive ability. That lets you repair two slots when using a specialist. So that means if you use a specialist crew instead of a navigation crew to repair shields, then you get to repair um, two of those shields instead of just one. Mm -hmm. And then you have the um, active ability of repair one shield. and it, the, if you place your specialist crew in that slot, you get to repair a shield um, without spending any energy. Because that specialist crew is very good at things and they manage to repair that shield um, very efficiently. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you have all those abilities. And um, every time you use a crew, whether you use it for navigation or use it to repair or you use it to activate a module, after you've done and completed that action, you would then send the crew to crew recovery. So after all these actions are complete, they go here. And the significance of that is you can only pull back for this size ship two crew members per round. So at the end of each round, when you recover your energy, you're going to recover crew and place them in available um, crew again. And anyone left over would not be able to come back until the next round. Any questions but on I, that? But I start with three available crew members. You do. You start with three. Okay. Uh, orange and pink have uh, other special abilities than we do. We to do. Yes. Um, so orange and pink, they have engineers, which lets you repair a module. Um, that's a very unique ability. It's the only way in, to repair a module that's impacted. And it has a uh, shield expert, which is the same as what everyone else has mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Okay. So um, we'll talk about damage as we get closer to that um, taking effect. So for now, it is uh, the first player is on Chris, and you can start us off. 
Okay. So, um, so I navigate. Uh, so uh, I would need to place a specialist to do something else, right? Correct. But I can't. No. But I can't shoot anyway in the first round because I'm still close to the station. Correct. That's correct. Um, okay. So but I will... you can you can instead of immediately using a weapon, you can actually charge it. So rather than activating this weapon and using it now, you can place energy energy on it at, on your ship's activation. Not use it now and then choose to use it at the moment that you want, which is either on your own activation or anybody, any other ship's activation. Assuming okay. you have the energy complete and the, the crew member there. The downside is, though, that crew member must stay on that module as long as you want to keep that charged. So they're effectively out of play until you decide to use that module, or you decide to take them off that module and lose the energy on that module. Okay, I see. Do I have to charge the fields as well, or the gemmer? You don't have to charge it. You can spend it right away. Um, but you can, certainly can charge it if you'd like. And the, again, the cost there of charging something is by keeping the crew member mm. on. OK, so I'll, I think I'll just do movement this, this turn. Okay. OK. Now I'm going to just go over some stuff with uh, Glenn real quick here, um, since it's the okay. first time yep. playing. So, Glenn, uh, there's a unique uh, uh, capability in this game called uh, the velocity mechanic, which you don't directly move your ship a number of hexes by moving your ship. Your ship always moves according to its velocity token. I'm sorry, its vector token on the velocity board. So right now, I've adjusted the, your, your vector token to be pointed in the right direction. It's aligned with the angle of your ship that you see here. And okay. you would spend energy to apply thrust to your ship. So it's kind of like um, if you've ever seen uh, more recent shows that handle physics and space well, like um, The Expanse, um, you you don't drive your ship like a car. You apply thrust to move it around and using yep. its main engine in the back and some maneuvering thrusters uh, that let you rotate. So you would spend energy on, on your turn as you activate navigation like we just went over. And then if I want to use that for thrust, I would move this token the direction that it's pointing um, one hex for every energy spent up to the maximum ability of that ship. In this case, you have a maximum ability of thrust of three and a rotation of two. So you okay. can spend three energy to move it up to three hexes and two energy to rotate up to two angles on your hex. Now, what that does is it'll the tabletop simulator will place that helper token that you see here, which normally you'd be placing uh, physically yourself. But in this case, we keep things moving. So it places the token for you, and that lets you know where your ship will be in the future. So once you've done your actions and you've planned your, your ship out, you would then move your ship to that position and spend any other actions that you have left, and then flip your token on the board and letting everyone know that you've completed your activation. Um, okay. So what's unique about this is that vector token does not go back to the middle every round. It stays there. So if you don't do anything, that's where you're going to end up. The next round, if you apply more thrust, you'll you can end up here. And let's say you want to rotate, that's where you'll be the next round. And the same goes every round after that. So if you again you choose to do nothing again, you'll you leave your velocity the way it is. That's where you end up. It doesn't matter which way your ship is facing. It only matters the position of this vector token in relation to the center of the velocity board is the same relationship on the sector board from the center of gravity to where that helper token is. But if I, for example, if I'm on that five, I, can I still move to the left side? You can only move the, the velocity token the direction that it's facing using thrust, but you can rotate it. So maybe the better move for me in that, that moment was to rotate two. And then the next turn, I can apply thrust and go this direction and move that, move that vector around. Um, so again, the, 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 because of the capabilities of the ship, they're not perfectly nimble. So you can you need to be able to manipulate this token to adjust its um, vector so that it goes in the direction that you want. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 starting to to see how this works. Yeah. So movement. 
the the battle cruiser is again not as nimble as a smaller ship so you must thrust first before you rotate so that means that you're always going to move your token the direction that's facing if you thrust before you rotate the token so that it's not as nimble meaning if you were to rotate first you can then go to a different direction but these ships are less nimble so you must thrust first and then rotate got it All right. And um, the name of the game is Velocity for a reason. So it's about leveraging the the, the velocity of your ship um, in, in most cases. You do have to slow down in, in certain situations where you need to interact, where you're either docking at the space station or trying to board a ship or something like that. Um, but in this case, this is all about catching your opponent um, on the other side of the board and preventing uh, Chris from getting to that jump point. Yep. And obviously working with Joe, your your temporary teammate um, from the other faction in in stopping that ship. Can I uh, go to the jump to the um, jump point with velocity five or do I have to slow down like with the space station before? You can be at any velocity and you okay, can be good. overlapping you can be overlapping that token uh, along the path. So for example, I'll use this ship here. And let's say that's where we're going. So this looks like I don't overlap the, the um, jump point. But actually I do, because when you're moving your ship, you're actually moving it along the shortest path, any shortest path to that token. Mm, OK. So you're actually moving it space by space, because that's how you are going to interact with other ships okay, that you're so That would be sufficient to, uh, to win. So that in that okay. case, on on any of the hexes along the shortest path, you overlap. That would be a win. Okay. But that's and not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything that you have to say about it, Joe? I don't know. We'll see. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. Why don't you? Uh, you're next. Wouldn't so bet you on that. <laughs> All righty. Oh, so did you complete your move? Yes. Oh, and uh, uh, and so now it's my move. Okay. So uh, I am simply going to. I'm going to use all my energy here. One, two, three, and I got to bring my guy down to navigation, and it gives me three thrust. Now the question is, and I'm going to rotate one. I'm going to decide to rotate the other way. And then um, I am going to take one of my specialists, bring it down to my Uh, missile launcher, and I'm going to use that last energy as we'll just prep it up there. And so that is my entire move. Okay. And I am done. All right, feel free to ask any questions again, since you're just joining in. It's your first move. Uh, so it's my turn now, right? Yes. Uh, what I'm going to do... Uh, I do Joe, uh, do you think it would be wise to just come up on to fly right on top of you or just go a little bit more downwards? So I'm going to aim to try to. Uh, uh, originally, I was going to try to scoot around this way. Yeah. On the, on the right hand side of that big one, I don't think I'm going to make it in time. If I can't, I'm going to just scoot right between the two, 
So you can either scoot with me between the two, or it might be a good idea for you to go. So do you have range weapons? How long is your weapon range? Uh, I have the particle cannon, which has, if I, if I shoot it as beam, it's unlimited. If I have the sweep, it's in an arc of six. I have two particle turrets, also range six. Oh, so you're going to want to get close. So it might be, we both might want to try to sweep in. We just have to be careful not to collide. That's all. Then I'm going to scoot on over. Yeah. Uh, that's... I don't know. That's my opinion. Whatever you would like, though. Uh, um, I think I'll just spend one, two, three. Put me there. Oh, yeah. I have to put this guy here. And I can... How much did it cost me to power up two crystals, right? Which one? The... Uh, I'm going to say the particle cannon. So they... Oh. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah it That's costs interesting. The particle, the particle cannon costs three energy, and it costs you one, one crew member to activate it. But you can charge uh, it. So if you place a crew member on that, if you place a crew member on that part of the cannon and place the remaining two energy, you're charging it up. Um, the downside again is that you don't get that crew member back. It has to stay there until you either decide to take them off and lose the energy or activate that weapon. Okay, then I guess then I'll just move like this or one space ahead, like this. Exactly. Your yeah. center of gravity yeah. is going to be where your marker is. That's the last portion. Okay, then I'll just flip this on over and then I'm done. Excellent. Okay, so first player token goes to Joel. Refresh. Okay. So and while Joel is, is going over his turn, I'd like to go over one of the mechanics of, of, and, and of firing your weapons or triggering your modules is that you can do that along any hex of the path to your final position and before or after your rotation. So if you're moving your ship and you happen to be in line with your target in that moment, you would leave your ship at that hex, activate your module, and then after it's done its damage or that's been resolved, you would then continue the ship's movement to where it would land. So you can fire at any point along your path. Okay. Super fast. Made my move. I'm going to rotate. And then I'm going to just take these two other crystals and put them right in my missile launcher and uh, since i'm six away i can fire correct larry you are you well you'll be six away along that movement so yes you certainly can all right so i am going to fire my missile we're going to try to do some damage here give it to him joe <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's my center of gravity is back here. So I'm going to put it on this side. And missile has fired. Oh, which means, excuse me, I need to take him off and my energy. And I'm done mine. Okay, Glenn. Okie dokie. Yeah, I'll just. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put that guy still at navigation, so I'm gonna take a move. So, let's see. I would still go three ahead, I guess. And I'm gonna... Uh, which button is to rotate R? 
the Q and E right. depends Q on the and direction. E. Yeah. And if you're if it's rotating in too small of an increment, you can adjust that in your tabletop simulator. If you look at the top right of your interface where you have the person lifting the weight, um, there is a degrees uh, setting. Click on that and change it to sixty. Oh yeah, got it. Yeah, like this. Yeah, got it. Uh, let me. This was the way it was supposed to be. Uh, I'm gonna rotate one. And I'm gonna go a little bit faster, like this, and I'll grab the remaining one to charge up my weapon. So that would mean I would go here and face this way, correct? You got it. And I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll take this one off and hand over the turn. Okay, so then I'll put my navigator to navigation and two energy to accelerate and one energy to rotate. And put my specialist on the particle cannon and charge it. And move the ship, obviously. <laughs> Hello. Oh, that's. Uh oh. I'm going to have to take you face of maneuvers, I guess. So Chris, is that all you're gonna do? Uh, yes, I'm out of options. I have no energy left. Okay. So, um, Larry, are you there? I am. At sorry. this point, everybody has done their moves. Yep. And so the board gets to go do their moves, which includes my missiles. And uh, I believe the missiles can move six. Is yes, uh, it? Is that? Yeah, got that, it. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. I was I was dealing with a what? bot in the Twitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and that's where it is. And with that, I take one of my lives out, or one of my timers, I should say. Timers, yeah. Yep. And there. And that includes the missiles. OK. Reset, then? Correct. And then the first player token moves. I think it did already, right? And it would yes, be I'd. Glenn's turn. Okay. Um, so, Joe, just to strategize a bit, I'm at velocity four, but I can maybe turn my ship around and go fly fly towards green and try to hit him with my particle cannon. Don't know if that's what do you think? I think that's a brilliant idea. So, for why don't you click on your token and it'll show you where you're going to land so you know what to do so that will be your end point so uh yeah i think you're going to miss all the asteroids so Let's see oh hmm. i don't i think this is this might be a great angle but i'm not really sure because next turn I might be able. Oh wait. Uh, oh, I get it. I have to. Uh, I also spend energy to uh, th throttle back, right? 
you, you no, spend energy. You... Sorry, um, you spend energy um, to move your token. So um, you can't move your token backwards. So to slow down, if you wanted to, you would have to rotate your token around. Um, and you to... have to move first and then rotate. Okay, so then I would. It, st it started here, and so I, then I would have to do this. Exactly. Yep. Okay, so that's what I will do. Uh, did you refill up with uh, five energy in advance? I mean, you spent two, but you refill. Oh up no, I didn't five. because I thought those three were supposed to stay here. On the oh yeah. Again. So any charge energy stays on that module, but doesn't take away from what you can recharge you. Your your reactor will always recharge to the maximum capacity of your capacitor. Oh. But you know you, yeah. you leave those. That's... You can leave those there. So that energy stays on the module, and you can pull new energy from the bag. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. And then you have two more sitting up here you can pull from if you like. Then I'll just do this, spend one more, and I'll go move um, my velocity back a little bit. So you, you only can do one navigation action, which is a thrust. And rotate, you can't do it twice on one activation. Oh, so I can't rotate and move backwards. Correct. Oh, wait, wait, then I have to. Uh, wait, let me. Yeah. But I, I think the point is here, just so you know, is you can fire your weapon at any point during your move. Yeah, but I'm not within the range of green, so. So, um, so you're. So let me, uh, I'll, go, I'll go over that strategy, Joe, if you don't mind. Um, so sure. the, um, right now, you have a weapon called Particle Cannon that you have charged up. And it has two modes of fire. Um, and I hope yep. uh, Chris doesn't mind me explaining this strategy. But it has a beam. And it has a sweep. The beam is a straight line from the front of your ship across yep. the entire board. Infinite range, right? Um, yep. So your target must be all along that path for it to take damage. If you end up rotating in this direction, which is facing back towards the space station, um, you have no line of fire to that ship. But if you if you were to keep your rotation pointing this way, then as he moves across your um, the, the your your range, you'll be able to trigger that weapon because you have it charged, you have a crew member, and you can take it on his action. Uh, I see what you're getting at. So basically, if I were to uh, let me take one crystal back, and I'll just if I were to rotate like this, I would have a line underneath Joe, which if he crosses that line, I, I shoot him. I shoot green. You can activate that module because you have the person, the the uh, crew team on that uh, module, and you have it charged up. Ah, uh, yeah, got it. Chris, yeah, I hope you didn't mind me helping him out no, with that. No, it's fine. Fine. <laughs> yeah, then I'll uh, just I'll I'll move like this. And, okay. Oh. Yeah. Then I'll just these two I'll spend and I think that's my action, so I'll just Yeah, I'm done. Okay, so my turn. Um I'll navigate and uh, I need two so. to get it here. Yeah. I'll keep the rotation and um, do, do I need a specialist to use the jammer, or is it just to um, uh, to charge it? So you do. You still need a crew uh, a token available to use the jammer, and you also need the available energy to use it. Um, you can use um, any crew, uh, whether it's a specialist crew or or a navigation crew, to activate the the jammer. Okay. The missile is in range of the jammer, no, just outside. But I can activate it during my movement. Correct. Okay. 
So I'll put the crew member on the jammer and uh, just charge all the stuff. Okay? Okay. So I'll do the movement and okay. um, can I activate both uh, modules in, in one movement? Sure can. Okay, so I would like to shoot at pink and uh, use the jammer. Sounds good. Somewhere, somewhere here. <laughs> okay. Uh, boy, I take I take it all, huh? Yes. You're so. the designer. You you have the best. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, Joe. I'll get him back for you. I'll I'll get even. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I, okay. I I'm gonna remove one missile, all right, because the, the jammer took a took a missile. That's what the jammer does; takes a timer, right? Yes. Yep. And I use the beam. And the beam gives me what? Three damage. Three damage. Yep. Boom. And the ship goes. Boom. There. But I think uh, Glenn is going to activate something along that movement, too. Yeah, um, I'll activate my uh, particle cannon fire beam at green. Right, so okay, that's so three damage to... To the shield. Yep. Uh, damage... I also now re remove my tokens from that weapon. Yep, so you take your crew and you put them down into crew recovery. And the energy gets spent, so you can put it. Usually, I usually put it on the top of the. Last um, Larry, uh, would you mind to jump in for me? Sure. Uh, because I have an appointment, uh, I did not uh, expect this to last so long. Oh, um, my apologies. But I like. It. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I like the game. It's uh, really cool. I consider pledging. Definitely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, we're, we're on Kickstarter yeah. to search for Velocity Vanguard. Yeah, thank you for uh, for taking the time. Much appreciated. Um, so I hope you can survive. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll <try. laughs> I will try my best. Uh, you probably have to eat the missile, I guess. But um, it sounds. It looks like it. Yes. But I think you are at full speed towards the uh, to the finish line. So. I'm optimistic. <laughs> okay, um, uh, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, see you guys. Nice to meet Take you. Take care, Chris. Bye bye. Hey, guys, it was guys, nice playing quick. with you. Hey, real, real, real quick, I'm just going to check the see if anyone's waiting um, to join. Sure. And see if anyone from the Twitch stream would like to join. Ja, andere afspraak. All right, so let's yeah. let's keep going. Is it is it my turn? Uh, I think he just went, so it's my turn. Oh, that's yeah, right. Okay, it... let me got it. Let me flip his token, and you go ahead, Joe. Bye. Okay, so uh, well, I took damage. Um. Do I have a repair specialist? Uh, An engineer? Give me. A, uh, yeah. You have support. You have shield. You have a, a I do support have one. Yeah. There you go. So I can uh, two energy with. Uh... All right. So first thing I'm going to do is let's uh, click my token. Where am I going to end up landing? Am I going to be safe? Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, I'll take. Uh, One there. You see, I'm going to go one, two. And so that's two energy. One, two. I'm going to uh, repair. Use one guy to. Pair, 
just do two. And then, well, that was one energy. And then I'm going to start charging up another missile here. I would have loved to fire. You know what? Uh, I'm going to go pull back one. And I'm going to uh, charge up a full missile. One, two, three. And zoink. Pull that guy there. Okay, so I'm going to move my guy. Oh, I'm glad I did that. Otherwise, I would have crashed into the asteroid. That's right. I was watching that. <laughs> <We're gonna get laughs> <out of it. laughs> and then uh, I'm going to let go of the missile right away. So one, two, three. And we'll drop a missile. Where's my missiles? Bring them over here, rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. And I'm gonna drop it on this side. I won't try to meet you on the other side here. Hmm. And I think uh, that's all I can do. All right. Okay. okay. That is the end of the round. So now the sector board activates and the anything that is not a uh, player control chip moves. So, Joe, you're the only one with objects on the board. So go ahead and move them and do your damage. Here it comes, buddy. One, two, three, four, and a boom. You had to take no, it I, slow, huh? So that's three damage. <laughs> um, so, so for those, uh, whoever's watching and uh, for, for you, uh, Glenn, you take damage right with your shields first from left from right to left. And yep. I had two two shield left, right? So any leftover damage continues to roll over and it hits your hull. On the first hull on this particular ship is what we call free. There's no additional effect. But if you start taking additional hull damage, you have to start rolling um, critical dice. And if oh. you reveal and you have to do that every time you get hit in the hull. So every time you get hit and it hits your hull, you roll as many dice as are revealed. And what that Got does, it. as you roll the dice, it'll tell you whether or not you take a reactor damage, in which case you remove a cube and it reduces your ability to generate energy. Um, and if you get down to zero reactor, your reactor goes critical and your ship explodes. Or if you are show a A or B module icon, that means you take damage to one of your modules and it goes from top down in each, each section. The configuration of the battle cruiser has an A and B slot. The first two slots are A, the second two slots are B. So if I was to roll an A, I would take the status cube off of that module. If I lose all the status cubes on a module, that module is no longer active and I cannot use it. The only way to get a module uh, back into action is to use an engineer. Um, which requires that you have that engineer specialist on your ship. I see. Yep. Got it. All right. So are you going to move that other missile, Joe? Yes. I right, just one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, very good, Joe. You, you're creeping up on him. Man, this is going to be tough. All right. Uh, so now the first player token moves, and um, so we recover our energy. I'll take that yep. five. Do I and... move the excess energy back into the bag? Uh, any anything excess? Uh, you can you can leave it there. Uh, it's, it's only if it's getting getting in your way. Um, okay. Yeah. Because I think uh, yeah, it looked like Chris had activated all his. Crew members, I can only take two back. So I'll take those two back since actually, you know what? I'm going to take two specials because I don't think I'm going to be changing the direction I'm going. So I'm just going to take two specialists back in case I need them. 
I think they will be needed. And now I'll take my action. So I will leave my, uh, obviously I'll leave my navigation alone because I don't have, navigation crew is exhausted. And I'll activate uh, some shield first. And just to let you know where I'm going, I'll tap that. And repair, because I'm using a specialist, I get to repair uh, two shields per energy spent. So I'm gonna um, repair four. And then charge up. Uh, hmm. I don't think the jammer is going to be as effective as I need it to be at the moment because that missile is very close. It's going to hit me. So I'm not going to bother with that. So I'm going to charge up my particle cannon and try to do some damage. And then I will move my ship. And that is the end of my activation. Joe, you are up. Okay. So let me click on my token. I am going to use my navigator. I need to get close to you here. Get my other weapon going here. So I'm going to go one, two. Uh, ta -ta -ta. That's two energy, one, two. I got one more missile I can drive. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. So, and then I am going to uh, charge up my missile. One, two, three. Oh, wait a minute. One, two. Three, four, five. Oh, I'm not, I'm too far away. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, I'm one too too much away. So yes, I will charge my missile. And get that ready. And then I am going to move my guy here. And I'm going to drop my missile, my last missile. Man, it's two and missiles. That would be the end of my turn. All right. Righty. Uh, I'm going to just pop that to see where I end up. So, I'm going to, oh wait, this is, I'll just put this on my left side. Um, Joe, I think I'm going to increase velocity. I'm going to change my direction to head more towards you. Um, I, I don't think I can even charge up any weapons, though, so I'll just spend all my energy on moving to get close to you, to get, give you some backup. That makes sense. You're limited to three, though. Nope. Oh, Sorry, wait, you, you um, yeah. yeah, you have to move your token the direction that it's facing. So you're not facing that way, so you can't apply your thrust that direction. You only can apply the thrust in the direction that your your ship is facing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So I can now just go uh, change like this. Let's see, and another one. I maybe might be able to do this. Yeah, it's gonna be no wait. Then I'm gonna collide. Yep. Uh, I'll take one energy back. So what I'll do is just, but I can't rotate anymore, right? So it's just only, this is the only thing I'm allowed to do when moving. I can't choose to just rotate. You can rotate now. Oh, okay. Yeah, then I'll just 
do that. And no. Then I'll rotate down here. Mm, yeah. It's a good choice. Then I'll and the remaining of my energy I'll just spend on my particle cannon. And I'll put a specialist on top of that. So yeah. No, that's my turn. Nicely done. All right, so that is the end of that round. And I'm going to be taking uh, some more damage, Joe. Yep, yeah, so missiles. So I think both hit you. One, two. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Three, uh, can, four, you mind if I, I, was, I, was, I wasn't paying attention as you moved, Joe. I, I missed an opportunity. Do you mind if I take that opportunity? Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. Oh, oh, wait, no, I know what that opportunity <laughs> is. <laughs> Only fair. Oh. Well, I just blew up my particle cannon, so, so I, I am going to fire my particle cannon, and you take three damage. Three damage I believe yeah. it is. Yeah. One, two. I need to lock these in place. Yeah, unfortunately, we pick them, so you. I can't pre-lock them, right? Yeah. Okay. So I took the three damage, but uh, I think all three missiles hit. Uh, all two missiles, excuse me. So that would be uh, six damage, is it? Six total? damage. Two, three, one. Nicely two, done, Joe. Three. All right, so I roll two die. Like, I'm Good thing I got my particle cannon off before I have to roll these. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's the last time I'll be using the particle again. Oh. Uh, good thing I got it off one time. Now it's all about, uh, wow, this is all about run for the gate. All right. And, and keep myself, <laughs> myself, uh, myself healthy. All right. So rat, that round is over. Damage is done. It's going to be a close call for me. Joe, you are first. So everyone regenerate, okay. um, take their crew back. Um, I think I'm going to keep my profile that same way. He's in a good direction here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to navigate, so I'm keeping my specialist crew. And keeping my profile low facing you, this way you have less of an opportunity to hit me. Okay. So... I am going to, first thing I'm going to do is, I, oh, I can't get any close. Wait, one, two, three, four. Hmm, 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 hmm. So if I just stay here, I'm going to need to start slowing down. Uh, da, 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 da. Huh, huh, huh. I got an issue here. I, I, I've now passed you in velocity. I'm going too fast. I can't fire my cannon. Um, so I am going to uh, just maybe r too late to do anything about that now. So, Oh, I don't have a particle cannon. It doesn't make a difference. So You have missiles, I, yeah. And you yeah. Just, I think you so, used them all. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to just rotate then. Yeah. You're just going to appear threatening. Within, oh, aren't you already within range to shoot? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yes. No, Thank you. You're not. Yeah, you're uh, using my your particle field. No, you. You. It goes from your center of your gravity. So your oh. X is in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm one away. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I remember counting that off. So next, uh, next time I will be able to. Next so I'm time, just, yes. Uh, so I'm gonna charge that up definitely. Uh, so I, I didn't. Uh, which is two energy. Oops. Ooh. Uh, excuse me. I fired my missile, so this this energy is gone. Sorry. Um, and I'm going to 
I'll spend my navigation. So I rotated one. I'm going to rotate two. Whoops. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rotate. And. All right. And and then uh, did I spend all my guy? Oh, I put uh, one guy there. So that was a two rotation. And I only have one more crew member. So do I, do I want to slow him down or do I want to do damage? Let's, let's go for damage. I'm going to try and move in to get a beam off. Okay, so I'm going to do damage. There you go. Like he's going to be able to do that for sure. Wow. Taken. Okay. I'm done. Sorry. Okay. So, Joe, I'm going to try and be of use this time around. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to take your five energy back at the beginning of the round. There you go. And for a person using Tabletop Simulator for the first time, you're very good at it. Ah, thanks. <laughs> All righty, then I'm just going to get some of that thrust going. No, oh, that's flipping. No, I'll just rotate one. That should put me... No like this, and I'll grab another energy just to make sure that beam is all charged up. Mm. I am going to be taking that damage, won't I? All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, man, but I... That's all right. So you that should is, have thought of that artifact. You're right. That's right. It's my fault. Um, so you are um, done with your actions? Yeah, I'm done. All right. All right. So I obviously have to heal myself get some recovery but do i split it up between hull now first thing i do shields first shields first and repair shields um oops i didn't take my energy back look at that Let's go. all right so take energy on you started with one too many Thanks for catching that, Joe. That's why I put him over here. Okay. okay. And then I'll do it again. Spend. That was the two energy I just spent. And then I can get another shield or a hull. I'm going to take another shield. Right here. For free. And I am done. Okay. So everybody's done. Reset. Oh, you didn't move your ship. No, I didn't move my ship, Joe. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to move. And it sounds like, from what I heard, Glenn, mm -hmm. you're going to be firing your, yep, I'm your uh, fire beam it. as I come across. Okay, so that yep. takes three off. Good thing I use my shields. And just so you know, I'm also firing my particle turret. Uh, I didn't think about that. Uh, nice, Joe. Finally, we got him in a nice combo. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but fortunately, I did not hit my hull because it's only two damage for the turret. So I am okay for now. All right, no more missiles on the board. And the round resets. Okay. And first. And this is going to be, this is not going to be good. <laughs> if I take. So I'm, I'm up next, right? 
Uh, yes, you're up. It's you're up first. Um, so you get to choose your actions, and I go after you, and then Joe goes. So, uh, just let me have a quick peek. Okay, this is where I'm going. Um, that's not what I want. No. Yeah, this one guy, I'll just keep him here because I want to do navigation anyway. Uh, oh, no, that's not what I wanted. So the red guy will also get back, right? Or did, or he's gone for now? I don't know if I get um, the, the guy. If you can pull two back, um, so if you haven't, oh yeah, if you haven't, spent, if you haven't spent three, you get two back. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then. Um, I'm looking at Joe where he's at, and I'm thinking I should perhaps. So it's first I move and then I rotate, right? Correct. I'll spend two energy to move over here, and I'll spend an additional energy to go. Wait a minute! No way! Wait! 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 I... I'm gonna take this back. But wait, if I uh, charge up a beam, I'll hit Joe too, right? With it, 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 it doesn't it, discriminate. It, dep me. it depends on when you decide to release it. So if you try to release it now along your path, yeah, Joe's blocking the path, so it hit him. Um, but he's also gonna move at some point. Um, but he'll be moving after I move. So the if you look at the order, it's probably gonna be really difficult probably impossible to hit me because of the order that we're going and Joe blocking that path. Nuts. <laughs> so you blocked, you wanted to block me, but you ended up blocking your own team, Joe. Mm -hmm. Nuts. Sorry. That's nah, okay. Because uh, let's see. Maybe I'm because I have to change direction anyway. I can't if I keep going this way. I'm, uh, I I I need to strategize with Joe. Joe, do you think it's a good idea idea to just go this way still to keep this trajectory? I think um, eventually. Let's see. Next time he goes first. So he uh, oh. He goes first. He might make this. He might make this. I I don't know. But either I, way, I think I think keeping your your bow pointing in my direction is is better. Yeah. Than taking the opportunity away to fire. Yeah. Then I'm going to gamble on this. I'll just Question. ready up my weapon, move over here, and just. Step, yeah, then I'll just have to do this and I'll end my turn. All right. So I am ooh, two turns away from making it. So I am going to again use my shields. Repair my shield, sorry. And do that with two. And spend this guy also to do it all the way. And then I will move my ship here. Ooh, Joe, that could have been the deciding factor in the game. Yeah. Are you done? <laughs> I am done. Okay, so... What I am going to do is, where do I go? Where's my token here? Where do I end up? So I end up on the other side of you. So I will be pointing towards you. I think that's probably best. So I'm getting out of your way. And collision rules would be, I would be on your this side, right? Yeah, because you're, so yeah, collision rules are um, they're in, in, you know, the core game rules, there are advanced rules that allow actual collisions, but in the core game rules where you're playing through the, the missions, you um, don't actually collide 
your ships will never collide because there is some 3D going on there, but you just don't see it on 2D, 2D representation. So you can't overlap the ship, obviously. If your center ha if your center of gravity would land on top of the ship, that means that you will go past it along the same path. If your center of gravity is before, which in this case it wouldn't be a collision for Joe anyway, it would it would stop before the ship. No, no impact on your velocity or at all, um, because again, there's no not a collision actually happening. So in that case, Joe would land there. So I'm going to use my dampening shield here. I'm going to charge that up, and I'm going to gonna fire it, it, and I'm going to slow you down. So, <laughs> <all right>. so <laughs> in that case, um, as the recipient of the jamming, I get uh, dampen. I get to decide which direction I'm going to go back because there's two ways I can go back towards the middle of my velocity board. Um, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, but I will do that. Oh, he still makes it. Okay. In addition to that, I'm going to uh, charge uh, uh, charge up my particle weapon and my particle turrets, and I'm going to fire that. All right, so I take two. And that is the end of the round. There's no missiles on the board. Um, I would go next as the first player. And I think we know what happens. I make it out of the jump point. Oh, I do the sunset. Go on. Oh, I got in your way. We would have had him if I did not get in your yeah. way. <laughs> ah, it's a, maybe I should have picked missiles because your missile combo, your missile work was really, really good. Yeah, or maybe I should have chosen an extra capacitor to have three more missiles. Yeah, I think you going, know, I, going, I, going, going, going around the outside. Um kept you a little far away for early engagement so maybe no i think I, I think you pretty much got a shot off almost every time along the way but yeah nice nice flying and especially for the first time playing and jumping in so quickly so really appreciate it um yeah, having thank you, you any uh questions yeah. comments feedback oh i I'm, i love this uh, this it was a really good game i'm, I'm thank definitely you. gonna check thank you so much for having uh, for having me both to you and uh, Joe as well. Uh, thank thank you. you. Next time we'll get them.